In this video, I'm going to take you on a journey into the surreal, incorporating paintings of black cattle with a dreamlike environment. So I've been exploring the theme of putting animals into surreal environments recently. And I just thought I'd show you a few work in progress paintings I've got going. So these are watercolors inspired by sitting on the beach and they're not quite finished, but they're almost there. So we've got a belted Galloway here and a guy in a suit standing in the middle of the water. And then there's a, a kayaker off in the distance. And then here's another one, a similar sort of theme. We've got a belted Galloway in the water and two guys in suits trying to kind of possibly corral or herd this particular animal. And, you know, sometimes the people are kind of in the water. Other times they appear to be able to almost walk on the water or sometimes they're apparently paddling. So I'm just kind of experimenting with different things, really. Um, and whoops, and there's uh, another one on the way as well. So again, same kind of idea. Two guys in suits, two cattle grazing. Notice I'm not even filling in the the gap in the body where the white stripe is. That's that's deliberate. So as I said, those aren't quite finished yet. But what I'm going to show you today is uh, an acrylic painting. So the other week I created this dancers painting on the video. And one of the things I was thinking about after that was the abstracted background um, and how I would like to use something along those lines at some point as the background for a surreal animal painting. Well, I'm not going to do that today, but it did remind me of this background that I started with the very intention of putting some cattle in amongst the swirls. So, so these multicolored swirls were just created by putting, you know, two or three different colors on a big brush and then literally rolling the brush. So I think it was probably a bigger brush than this one. It might have been the same size, but basically just rolling the brush across the paper. Um, and as you can see, you get this sort of weird, random, almost dreamlike effect, I feel. So that's the plan. So I actually reorganized my kind of art materials the other day. So I'll, I'll just take you through that, actually. So the other week I posted a photo of a little set of three trays that I got from Ikea and I used that next to my easel. Really handy. And I thought I'd share with you my latest Ikea purchase. Check this out. So we've got uh, big tubs of conventional acrylic. We've got tubes of conventional acrylic. We've got some pencils, um, water soluble colored pencils, which I rarely use, some ink tents, uh, both blocks and pencils, and then some charcoal back here and some unlocking formula. So this is, I, I rarely use this stuff, but I do need it. Along with some uh, stuff, for my little action camera. The next draw up is basically uh, watercolors. So there's my palette. I've got my water brushes here that I take out and about with me. So these um, all have a hollow handle and you can fill those with water and then you just press this little button here and it controls the flow of water to the bristles. So they're not as good as a conventional, you know, mop brush, but they're really handy for carrying around. I've got my little uh, ink tents travel kit here as well. So that's really compact and handy. And then some other watercolor kits too. Got some camera equipment in here. So these are just various leads, a tripod, uh, etc. Uh, this is my SLR digital camera. I use that to take photos of finished paintings so that if I want to create a print for my website, uh, that's what I use. Then we're up to here. I've got loads of masking tape and sets of marker pens, fine line marker pens with water resistant ink. So that's really good for illustrations and also for line and wash work. If I'm putting line down first, then using watercolor afterwards. And then Here's one of my main uh, meals, as it were. These are the Atelier Interactive Acrylics. So I've got, hello, that shouldn't be in there. Where's that gone? System three, that's the wrong drawer. Um, so uh, Atelier Interactive Acrylics. So these are the 
acrylics which even when touch dry you can spray the paint with water and then blend the paint so you can get nice soft edges and things so i love using those and then finally the top drawer pad of paper various brushes that i can use as backups to the ones next to the easel and then this is just a tub of watercolour marker pens and acrylic paint markers so this is about as organized as i get um, basically i need big drawers that i can just chuck stuff into and then scrabble around and find what i need and having done all that reorganization um, i rediscovered these big chunky liquitex acrylic paint markers so um, if you've been watching the channel for a long time, you may have seen me do a few paintings with these. And uh, one of the things I like doing with these is even though they've got a big nib, um, I like using the sort of dry brush approach. And I'm going to use this to uh, sketch in the first of the cattle. Now, I want to keep some of these lovely colourful swirls showing, but you know, it's going to be a surreal painting. So let's, uh, let's just begin and kind of see where we end up. So there's the sort of top of the forehead of the first animal. And then the main part of the nose comes down there. I probably made the angle a little too far away from vertical, but nothing we can't, um, can't live with. And then the end of the nose is here. So what I'm doing is just using the edge of the of the thick 15 mil nib. And I mentioned dry brush earlier. And as you can see, the marks I'm putting down at the moment aren't dry brush because the the nib has got has been primed with too much paint. But my hope is that um, as I continue to draw and the ink hopefully gradually, not the ink, the paint gradually runs out, then um, we'll get a few dry brush effects coming in, in, you know, in much the same way as you would with a normal brush. Now, one of the things about black cattle is, you know, the, their hides, I think, are really beautiful with all the colours they reflect subtly in the black. Uh, but one of the problems in terms of depicting them is that, especially when you've got a reference photo taken at quite a distance, is, you know, you, you can lose a fair bit of definition um, in terms of, you know, the shadows are can be quite difficult to pick out in fairly flat lighting. So as I come up here, I'm going to leave a gap where that, this kind of magenta swirl is. Leave a little gap in the line work. And just put in the top of the back there. And again, jump the line from one side of that to the other. Come down to the, the front leg. Now, I've got quite a considerable sort of swirl here. Uh, I'm actually going to put most of the leg over the top of that, I think. And then when you're drawing legs of an animal or, in, or indeed a person, it's often quite helpful to look at the gap between the legs. Look at that shape rather than look at the legs themselves. And let's sweep that other leg across the front. Now, 
Now I've got this, uh, you know, pinky magenta swirl here, so I'm not going to do any line work there. But if I was going to, the line of that leg would actually come up quite high. And the belly kind of dips down to here. So I'm going to have that peeking out around about there. And then uh, let's put in the the foot. Then that other leg, the other hoof is kind of showing through here. So fairly limited line work, but hopefully we've got a sense of movement with this particular animal. Now, at this stage, I'm not actually sure whether I want to include any other cattle or not. Um, so for the moment, what I'm going to do is come in with the same marker and just begin to add a little bit of tone, just using the, the, you know, the larger uh, dimension of the nib. And I'm just going to be fairly gently applying the marker so that I do get some dry brush effect, effect like mentioned before. So we'll use this to start to describe the form of the animal. So I'm keeping my paint marks in line with the surfaces, parallel to the surfaces of the animal. Probably afford to raise the top of the head up a bit there. So when you're doing this kind of painting, uh, the sort of surreal work, what I find is that um, sometimes it's sort of best to let the painting tell you what it needs. So what I mean by that is rather than overthink things and try in the first instance to depict the animal exactly as, as it is, what I'm doing really is putting down sort of a first approximation of what's going on. And then when I've done that, you know, obviously because I'm using this dry brush technique so that there are tons of gaps in the, in the, uh, the paint strokes. Uh, and sometimes those sort of automatic missing bits will help the painting and other times, you know, they'll detract from it. But you know, I'm, I'm trying to paint something here which essentially doesn't exist. You know, uh, I haven't yet encountered cattle wandering through vibrant multicolored swirls. Um, yeah, there's still time, there's still time, but you know, so there's no right or wrong really. We've just got to kind of explore and see what's happening. Um, okay, so for now, I'm going to leave that one. I think I'm going to put some other cattle over here. So in that same, I've got quite a nice sort of expanse of unpainted paper here on the right. So on the, or in that gap, I'm going to put the other animal, which is um, in front of the one I've just drawn. So 
So I'm just having a little bit of trouble seeing what's going on in my reference there. So this one's almost silhouetted, really. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing for the for the painting. So there's an ear. And we'll put another ear in there. So the head's down, grazing. So there's a front leg and then again I've got this decision to make about you know how much do I describe through the background swirl so I think I want to describe some of it but uh, again I want to preserve some of that background stuff so we'll put in a bit of the line of the, the back there leaving a bit of a gap in the line work I've got a front leg uh, so a rear leg would kind of The lower part of it would come down here. That front leg comes back and we've got a, bit, a little bit of belly showing and then another rear leg here. So I actually intended to originally to make this animal quite a lot smaller than this one, but you know, it's worked out okay, I feel. So um, we'll do the same treatment again. Just map in the general contours with the dry brush technique. Or we'll dry brush for the most part, depending on what the, the marker pen produces. So continuing with um, a fairly simple colour scheme for the animals here so that there's a nice contrast between the vibrant, almost fluorescent background. I'm just going to go with uh, tinting white, which I use quite a lot, and then carbon black, which I rarely use. And then going through my recently reorganised studio drawers, um, I just discovered this pale gold, um, which I've never used before. So I might use that for some of the highlights on the cattle as well. I think that might be quite uh, an interesting effect. So I'm going to begin with some pure carbon black and uh, use that to put in the very darkest areas. So for example the underside of the the jaw there. It's very dark. On that left ear. And also on the right ear as well. Now I'm going to leave some gaps in my brushwork here as well, in the same way that I did with the paint marker. Definitely some dark shadow the top of that leg and then I'm going to spray the surface of the painting with water to get the um, interactives 
flowing a little better. And I really enjoy painting with interactive paint over the top of conventional acrylic. It's, uh, it's a lovely surface to paint on top of the dried conventional acrylic. And also you do get a nice interplay of colors because you, you know, if you put the, the interactives down very thinly as I'm doing here, then um, you, you get some nice colors showing through from the paint you put down earlier on. So although I'm using black, because I'm putting it down nice and thin, there are greys and blues coming through from the very earliest stages of the painting. Now that that bit went on a little heavy, a little too dark. So let's see if I can just lift off some of that. That worked reasonably well. But as I'm kind of adding extra paint, I don't want to sort of draw a hard line around these colourful swirls. There has to be sort of a sense of the, I don't know, the animal sort of emerging from a soft boundary between the two. So I'm happy to leave bits of white paper showing in places. And also, as I'm doing here, I'm just running the darker paint into some of those swirls a bit. So we'll continue with that theme over on the right hand animal. Again, that bit's gone down a little heavy. Let's just spray that bit with water. So next I've just switched to a small round brush and I'm going in with some of this gold paint just uh, straight out of the tube. So, you know, I put the black down neat. There was no mixing. I'm putting this gold down with no mixing. So I'm just going to actually um, use the gold here on the, on the hoof of the animal here. And we'll do, you know, it's not really in keeping with the, the reality of the situation, but then, you know, one could say, well, what part of the painting is. So we'll put some more there on that one. And I quite like the way that's working with the, the black. 
So now when we come back up to the head, there are some areas which are catching the light on the end of the nose. So let's use this gold to put in some fairly subdued highlights on top of the black. So I think this gold may be a little bit iridescent, actually. It's looking like it is. Not, not massively so, but there's a little hint of iridescence. And that it is also mixing in a little bit with the, uh, the still wet black. So it's actually producing quite nice subdued highlights, which are appropriate for a black animal. So let's uh, continue with that theme. But without going. Too crazy, but we'll just put a few little licks in here. And then again, um, moving over to the other animal. Actually, before I do that, let's uh, let's put a little line of gold in there. And a touch there on the other knee. And then on this animal. few other highlights and really you know for the most part I'm I'm just letting the, the drawing or the painting tell me what it needs I'm not really referring to the reference too much um, but I am very much uh, liking this gold subdued black combo and going back to the dancers that I referred to at the start of the um, uh, start of the video I'm now kind of thinking well at some point I need to come back and use this black gold combination for, to depict some some dancers. I think that would be really quite dramatic. Um, OK, so so far, so good. Now, before I come in with some highlights, I do just want to soften the edges of some of these gold highlights that I've put down. I'm, I don't mind the I don't mind the brushwork on this this one, but uh, I just think I need to soften that a little bit perhaps break it up a, a touch as well. Same over here. And I think when that dries, that will work better than it was. All right, well, back in with the pure black now and the small round brush. I'm going to use that to put in a dark shadow here for the nostril and while I've got that on the brush um, let's put some semblance of an eye in here so again I'm not going to go into great detail but just so that it, it looks as if the animal has an eye So my plan had always been to include at least one more animal kind of off in the distance somewhere. Um, and I want to continue with that. But what, I, what I'm now thinking is I've got this uh, steer in profile grazing away. So I'm going to use that as my reference. But unlike the animals I've done before, I'm going to paint this one in gold. But then hopefully there's going to be a little bit of a twist, which I kind of feel might lead to a series of new paintings, actually, but uh, um, I'll get to that in just a second. Let me get a different brush, because this round is not quite what I want. So I'm just, just switching to a small flat brush. It's going to allow me to just block in the silhouette a 
little more quickly and efficiently. Yeah, generally speaking, I would say that the less the less fiddling one can do with the brush strokes, the better for an impactful painting. So generally speaking, you know, if you can do something in five brush strokes, that's generally going to give you a better effect than, you know, 15 brush strokes, I would say. I mean, you know, it's not always possible to do things um, in so, so few marks, but if you can, I personally feel those paintings work best for me. So I'm picking up just a little bit of black that's mixed in with the gold on the palette, but I'm not too concerned about that. And then I am going to switch back to the small round now so that um, I can just do these legs. Um, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about that now. That hasn't quite worked in the way I thought it might. So I think what I'm going to do is I still have the my idea in mind, my, my idea for future stuff. As I say, I will come to that in a second. So I think what I'm going to do is just keep the gold there, but with the same round brush, I'm just going to grab some of the carbon black and uh, let's kind of do a little more drawing. I quite like the fact that this distant animal is treated in a different way to the others. And I want to keep the drawing that I'm putting down fairly loose and lively so it doesn't get sort of too tight and descriptive. But you know at the same time it's got to look like a steer. And you know for, in terms of lively drawing uh, a, a round brush I think is, is brilliant for that. Um, flat brushes are great for, for drawing as well I do really like those but um, the kind of the, the give you get in a round brush when you apply a bit of extra pressure. I think it you know adds a certain um, calligraphy element to the mark making. And while you can do calligraphy with a with a flat brush for sure, I, I feel it's generally speaking a more sort of controlled feel. Whereas this is, you know, another thing altogether really. So let me just show you the iridescence on the gold. So here viewing from the right and then as we come round to the left you can see the gold really you know brightens up and becomes more metallic looking. 
What I'd like to do next is make it so that this swirl is interacting with the animal a bit more because I'm quite pleased with the legs and the head, but this area here, it's not quite working. So um, what I'm going to do is look closely at the edges that I've created pretty much by accident in this swirled uh, blue and kind of purpley magenta color. And I've just got, gone back to the carbon black. And what I'm doing with this little round brush is just picking out the shape of those random, randomly shaped, kind of frayed, ragged edges. And then my plan is to create something of a cast shadow on the animal. So this, as if this swirl of whatever it is, this weird mist or, you know, who knows what it is. But that's kind of the point of the painting, really. Um, but it will cast some kind of shadow on the animal. OK, so we've we've done that there and sticking with the same brush and paint. Let's um, let's echo that shape that I've created. Reasonably well, we don't have to be too precise about it, but. And then perhaps this bit is also casting a bit of a, sh a shadow rounding over the top of the back. And then, you know, it's a little bit of a hard line at the moment. So what I'm going to do after I've just wiped off this brush is I'll come back in with the flat brush and uh, we'll use a more dilute version of that same carbon black. Just like I did earlier on. And uh, we'll, we'll just kind of soften some of those edges and fill in to make just make things a little bit darker on this part of the animal. Let's get a bit more paint. So I'm doing this fairly gradually because I don't want things to be super, super dark. Just gradually build up the tone. And what I'm doing here is just kind of tapping the brush down so that it's not a, okay, it's a little bit of a hard divide between the the swirl and the animal on this side, but I want it to be softer elsewhere. So that's working a little bit better, I feel. Let's just spray the surface of the painting with water. I'm just going to tease out the edge of some of that cast shadow as well. And I will put a little bit of stronger black down there 
there as well not too again not too much but just a bit more 